and thanks for joining us for Healthline 3. I'm Chrissy Quill. You know, following this past weekend's Grammy Awards, many people are asking how some of these older stars look so young and look so good. Cosmetic surgeon Dr. McIntyre Bridges with Bridges to Beauty joins us to talk more about the anti-aging secret to the stars. He's actually going to be answering your questions for the next half hour. So we really want to encourage you to ask the questions on your mind. If you're online right there at KTBS.com, just click on that orange Healthline 3 box. That takes you to this webcast, which is streaming live. You can watch the webcast right there. You can also submit your questions right there at KTBS.com. Or just give us a call. Numbers right here at the bottom of your screen, 318-219-4569. We'll be taking your calls and your questions until 1230. Dr. Bridges, it seems like it's the million dollar question. What do we do to keep from from, from looking our age, to keep from uh, to just to keep from aging in general? There's a lot of different things <laughs> to do. Uh, if you're talking about facial features, you gotta remember when we're younger and think we, we have more fuller features. Right. You know, like cheeks. We have more of a heart-shaped face. Uh, those tend to change over time you know, due to gravity and primarily muscle pulls. Mm -hmm. uh, things to get people looking younger uh, is, you know, facelifts can do it, obviously, and uh, you can do some type of injectables in the cheek regions. Uh, fat injections work well, okay. but you know, in, in, in short term, you know, you can use the Juvederms or the Radius and stuff to fill those out. Of course, getting rid of wrinkles. Right. You know, that, that's always looks younger. And then making the, the features around the mouth as well as the lips fuller or sharper. Do you mean like this area in between the nose and the, or is it more like the bottom area? Or a little that's bit of both. everything? Both. Really? Yeah, but most people that get the uh, juvederms or the radius will do the nasal fold okay. as well as the lips. Uh, in this region, the separation between the, the jowl regions and the chin, you can actually fill in some of that shadowing, okay, and make the jawline look sharper. Okay. Uh, I like to do the what's called the marionette area, which is here, and I will kind of push this up and things as well as fill in there to kind of prop it up and turn the, the corners of the mouth up and try to get as, as much of the shadow any way as we can. Really, and this is all just just kind of a, a needle that you just kind of poke in and, and yes. go from there. Yeah, it's a, it's a needle, and the substance in there are very biocompatible. You know, there's not really a real problem with them. Uh, they last anywhere from depending on what you use. Uh, Eight to nine months to wow. a year and two months. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we need recovery time, or is this something that someone can go back to work the next day? They can go back to work the next day. When you do injectables, you know you're sticking a needle in someone, so you really want them to avoid things that might thin their blood, okay. because that, that can cause some bruising. You really you, you usually don't see it in the nasal labial fold regions or or the marionette lines stuff, but you can see it in the lips, and you if you're doing Botox around the eyes, you can see it there too. Okay. So <clears throat> aspirin you know, within the blood. Right. So you want to stop that at least a week to 10 days before. Your anti-inflammatories such as uh, ibuprofen and leave, you need to stop about three or four days before. But it's just be helpful, I mean, okay. as far as preventing t any type of bruising. <clears throat> if you take certain vitamins like fish oil capsules or vitamin E, you know, stop those a week before. Right. Those are good things. How long does a procedure like this take? Mm, depending on how much you're doing. Uh, on average, it's gonna be between 10 and 15 minutes. If you're doing an injectable, and you have to kind of numb someone up before, that's going to take a little bit longer. Right. You know, it's not, but it's, you know, it's basically in and out. Right. Uh, there's really no downtime. On the injectables, we might give them a little ice pack and things to kind of, you know, pat on the areas for about 20 minutes, but that's really about it. Interesting. Botox, pretty popular among women out there, huh? It is. Yeah, Botox is, is, is probably the most popular um, injectable out there. Okay. Uh, there's. Uh, another uh, Botox-like injectable that looks to be, you know, uh, in terms of comparison, <clears throat> on the same par as Botox, okay. Okay, called Xeomin. Um, it, uh, it lasts just as long, it's just as effective as, as paralyzing the, the muscles, which you're, you're after. Its price might be less. Uh, I'm not 100% sure and thinks if it's actually going to have a lower price point or not, but that's, that's some of the, uh, the thoughts behind it. And so this is a, a Botox competitor kind of thing? Yes, yeah. And have you found any, any flaws with, um, with this eczema? No, not really. No. No, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's good. I even, I've done some research on it. Uh, the clinical studies show that basically it's, like I say, it's comparable to Botox as far as its effectiveness, length of stay. Um, you know, they, they, they looked at people who are having, you know, gabella regions, which is the, the, what it's approved for for the FDA as far as cosmetics, but also the other 
uh, type of patients that have some neuromuscular disorders or spasms, it's very, very effective on that also. Right, interesting. Um, and this is something that you said just the past two years kind of. Uh, yeah, it was approved two years ago, but now they're trying to push it for cosmetic reasons. Really? You know, so they come visit your office. Right, exactly, and say, we want, we want that, right? Yes, yes. Now, where is the most common place for a woman to get Botox, or is it just depending on, on which area they're working on? Well, you know, it's FDA approved for this, but we put it, you know, this is probably the most common. It's okay. called the gabella region, because you know, they don't like that little hash mark between yes. their eyes or the little, little um, wrinkles there. Very, very effective there. Really? I mean, it, it, it's it, it'll last anywhere from four months to six months. If you do it, you know, if you keep repeating it, where basically you come in every four months and stuff, it'll start to extend out even further than that, up to eight months or so. But it's also, it, it, it gets the muscles small, uh, takes the bulk out of it, which is primarily its, its beneficial long-term effect. Okay. Is there anything, any dangers to, to uh, Zeman or, or Botox? No, there's not any real dangers. I mean, I haven't seen any problems with it. I mean, where you inject it, you really want to be careful with because right. you can, you know, give, give someone what's called lid lag, which is basically the eyelid basically is, is won't open completely. That right. looks a little funny. Uh, I really haven't seen that, but, you know, it, it's, it's certainly been reported. I'm sure, you know, some people will get an re immune response to it at some point where it might not be as effective. In other words, it's a little protein, so they'll make antibodies to it at some point like our body is supposed to. Right. Uh, I really haven't seen much of that at all. I might know one or two patients over the last 10 years that basically it doesn't work anymore on, and it's only because their antibodies will block that little protein before it gets to the receptor site. Really? What's what's this um, Zeman made of? Is it is it any? I mean, how's it? Same thing as as, as regular Botox. Okay. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a, a breakdown of a botulism toxin. Uh -huh. uh, comes from from uh, you know clostridium and things. Uh, right. But it uh, it's been purified just like Botox. You know, it's safe. Uh, you know, the FDA isn't going to allow anything on the market that's not safe. Right. I mean, completely safe. Is this what a lot of the stars, especially you know the women who are a bit older, is this what they probably do yeah, on a regular basis? Yeah, the ones that are a bit older probably had a little facelift too. Right. You know, but you know, in terms of just making that that calm appearance, uh, is Botox probably is the biggest you know uh, portion of that. Right. I mean, you can do it around the eyes. Again, so they don't get the little crow's feet. Yes. You know, you can do it on the forehead. On well, the forehead, you know, it's, it's a little tricky. You don't want to go real heavy. Um, what happens is, since the eye, eyebrow itself, this little patch of hair we call the eyebrow, is constantly in tug of war. You know, you know, these muscles bring it down. These muscles bring it up. Uh -huh. If you knock this one out completely and things, and you haven't done anything to these, then basically it causes the eyebrow to drop. Now, aesthetically, that's not real good just because a crowded upper eyelid looks older. Right. Okay. If the eyebrows are a little bit elevated, then Raise. that looks better. Right. And so you really want to knock out, you know, the, the corrugator and the, you know, uh, muscles around the eyes so that it allows the tone in this muscle to kind of give it that extra two or three millimeters worth of lift. Right. Okay. okay. And, you know, you talk to me, well, I got Botox and it lifted my lateral eyebrow. That's a good thing in mm -hmm. women. I mean, it's probably a good thing in men too, but you don't want it too high in men. Right. Um, but it's uh, it's only because you've you've taken off you know the opposing muscles. I mean you, you've knocked out one, so this one basically will raise up because the frontalis extends all the way out to the lateral portion of the of the eyebrow, and so you know it's it's all it is artsy craftsy. Okay? Right, and you, right. And everybody's a little bit different. You know when you go to inject someone, I always have them squint or frown mm -hmm. or do certain things. So I can see exactly where their muscles are and how big they are. Okay, because you really want everybody. If you just inject in the same place every time on everybody, it's just not going to work well. Right. Do you find different types of skin react different to to the Botox and the, and the Zeman, or is it it's kind of? No, I mean no. It, it, they, they they all react well. Okay. Okay, and again, they'll take care of the the wrinkles and stuff, and the muscles. Again, you get them quiet, and they don't etch little lines into your in, in, into your skin. Uh, and people just look more peaceful. Uh -huh. The skin part, you know, uh, freshen up the skin, you have several me mechanisms of doing that. You can have the light peels, especially prior to like a big event. Right. You don't want to do it, you don't want to do something big within a week kind of situation because you're probably not healed up. Right. But you can do light peels. If you if you do 10 days before, you can do what's called a, uh, a laser microdermabrasion, okay, where we use the CO2 laser and we do it very, very lightly. It just takes off all that dead skin, freshens things up. They're, really kind of 
they're going the next day. They're going that evening too, but they, they'll have a little bit of pinkness, but it, that, that goes away pretty quickly. Much more effective than a regular microdermabrasion or, or the diamond microdermabrasions, which we have in the office too, but they really want to get some of the dead skin off and things. That's not a bad way to go. So the laser microdermabrasion, I, I feel like it's, it's, are you just kind of going over the face and, and kind of somewhat like a facial getting off that dead skin? Yes. In a way? Yeah, it's a, it's a little deeper than that. Right. I mean, it gets, it gets down to what's called the, um, uh, not down to the dermis, but down to the basal cell layer, which is, is you know, that's that's your fresh layer. Your, your, your new cells are all at the basal cell layer. Everything stacked on top, in other words, coming towards the surface are dead cells or okay. dying cells. And so you're able to get that off. And, and those cells that are deeper have a much shinier appearance, much yeah. fresher appearance. Uh, I mean, the, the, the skin on top looks a little dull, especially as we get older. Right. The dead cells seem to stick on to us much more firmly than they did when we were younger. Mm -hmm. And so you get those off and things, it looks much fresher. Uh, it really does. It helps with the, with the pigmentation portion of it also. Um, not the deep pigmentation, but right. that superficial kind of brown or yellow that we'll see. Do you find, I know kind of with a facial, um, after having a facial, you can sometimes, uh, the face can break out in certain areas. Would that be the case when you're talking about this laser? If laser? they have real oily skin, I'll actually, you know, put them on a little cleaning regimen afterwards really? and stuff, and maybe even a little antibiotics just, just, just to ward that off. But I really haven't seen much of that. Okay. And the laser uh, microdermabrasion is pretty popular? It's pretty popular. Yes. I use the same machine. Uh, for that, as I do some of the, some of the deeper um, um, laser tightening kind of situations, okay. I, I've had great results with it as far as tightening the skin, but also brightening of the skin. The really? skin just looks so much younger, you know, in terms of its color. Right. Because again, as we get older, we get browns and yellows yeah. and stuff, and you know, if you if you just kind of uniform all that, they look much better. They're very very happy people. Kind of gives you that glow in a way. It does. It does. I mean, our skin was much brighter when we were younger. Right. Okay, and um, if you can get that brightness back, I mean, that alone will make people look younger. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had some, some very challenging cases where they come in, they have all those wrinkles that go up and down. They look like, you know, like a, um, a brick, you know, floor or something like that. You really? know? And so, you know, it's very, very effective in, in reducing that. In fact, I've, I've done several in a row on some people and stuff. It's very, very effective for that. But they still have some. And it'll take some areas where they're deep wrinkles down to kind of superficial wrinkles. They're real happy with that, but they're really impressed at how young their skin looks just because of the color. So when talking about the laser microdermabrasion, some people it would be just one office visit, but in other people, depending on how deep you need to go in the skin, it might require several office visits? Yeah, the, the, I, like I say, I use the same laser, um, <clears throat> you call that smart skin laser, for real superficial stuff, which is just what I call the microdermabrasion. <clears throat> When you're doing laser resurfacing, okay, which basically is is it's like a, a peel, a deep chemical peel. I think it's much more effective than that. <clears throat> um, I use that same laser, but I'm, I'm using higher energies. Okay. So yeah, the the microdermabrasion things you're going to be taking off the disc in. You're freshening yourself up for an event or a party or right. whatever kind of things, and it, it lasts you know months and months. But you know it's it's not like the the deeper th stuff. The deeper stuff really, I mean, it helps. Again, the color is just, just great. Right. Interesting. And uh, what's our price point um, when it comes to the laser microdermabrasion, or does it vary? It, it'll vary from person to person. Okay. Some people, you have to carry it down to the neck to kind of get some little spots and all. For the, for the um, um, actual deeper ones, we charge like $2,000 for the first one and $1,000 for the second one if they need to follow up. And is this something, how long do you, do you see the effects of this? When talking about the, the laser microdermabrasion, is it something that you see for weeks or months, or is it just oh, you'll kind see of it for months? For months, for okay. Months, yeah, and especially if they have a good skincare regimen afterwards, because really, if you keep off that dead skin and things, it, it, it's very much. It's effective for a long time. Dr. Bridges, as we're sitting here talking, I'm thinking it's Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. What a perfect gift for, you know, so many times men out there have trouble finding their significant other, right. you know, that perfect gift that, you know, a lot of times that's what we want to buy for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, goodness, I'm sure you guys see a big increase in business around, the, around Valentine's Day especially. Yeah, for that and for the Botox and injectables. Uh, all of them are very effective. All of them basically work like they say they're going to work with minimal risks. Really? Yes. You were mentioning the chemical pill. I, mm -hmm. I kind of think of that as a mask and, and pill it off. Is that how that works or is it totally different? Essentially, uh, it, um, you know, both the chemical peels as well as the, the laser resurfacing, I always look at both of them as a type of, of trauma. Okay. 
one's a chemical trauma, one's a laser trauma. They're affecting the tissues on top of the skin, the very superficial layer of skin, as well as the dermis, depending upon how deep you use the peel. Some, some peels are light, some, people, some peels are, are, are deep. But, you know, we're doing that only because we know that uh, when we, quote, injure the skin, okay, in a certain fashion, the fibroblasts that make up the, the thickness of our skin or the collagen of our skin, the elastic fibers of our skin, don't like it much, okay? And their job, when they're you know, kind of put upon, is to make more collagen and more elastic fibers. And so you can reduce, you can reverse the, the, the um, physiologic age of that skin by doing it. Chron chronologically, it would still be 56 years old. Right, know? right. But uh, you know, the, the way it feels, the way it looks underneath the microscope, things on the lines, it, it, it's much more metabolically active and younger skin as we had a long time ago. Interesting. When we were when we were a lot younger, right? right. These right. are the secrets that we see uh, the star. This is what the stars do. I'm sure mm -hmm. is um, you know right before the big red carpet appearances. But as you said, if you're if you have a big event that you're getting ready for, it's not a good idea to do it the day before, or even two days before. It's something that you want to do maybe a week or so leading right. up to a big yeah. event. You can probably do a regular microdermabrasion a day or so before, but I wouldn't okay. do anything. I mean, the laser dermabrasion, I'd, I'd still give about a week or so. After these procedures, can you put makeup on, or do you recommend people wait 24 hours? Or well, with the with the micro uh, uh, laser dermabrasion, I usually have people wait, you know, 24 hours. Okay, with the you know, like a light chemical peel or or microdermabrasion using traditional sand or the, even the the diamond uh, microdermabrasion, you can you can put makeup on right afterwards. Oh wow! Yeah. If you have questions for Dr. Bridges, we invite you to give us a call, 318-219-4569. Today we're just talking about different anti-aging methods out there available when it comes to cosmetic surgery. Of course, Dr. Bridges with Bridges to Beauty will be here answering your questions for another 13, 14 minutes or so. You were mentioning a little bit earlier um, injectables. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of those, a lot of the stars, it seems like they just have the perfect lips. Mm -hmm. Are they born with these? Some are. You know, like Angelique Jolie is probably that's has just a care, lips. right? Absolutely. Um, most aren't, uh -huh. you know. It's, but yeah, like I say, you want to be a little careful with the injectables around the lips, I me, mean, because I think you know, again, I think most people have seen the reality shows where, you know, you don't want to look like the Joker, right? You know, I mean, they're too big, they're too long, they they just they don't seem to fit the face. Mm -hmm. They look a little bit animation-wise, right? You know? uh, so it, it, it's it's an art. The way I approach it is, you got a pair of lips, okay. I look at first the features around it, okay. The the filtral columns, this little these little you know full areas we have on on, on each side okay. of the, the 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 column mellow. And then I look at the the shape of the of the um, separation between the normal skin and the lips. It's supposed to be elevated, or at least to be elevated when we're young. If you've seen a child's, I mean, they have mm -hmm. very very sharp features, okay, around the lips itself, the separation between the vermilion, which is the pink part, and, and the normal skin above. And you really want to sharpen those up. I mean, if you sharpen those up, you know, top and bottom, it doesn't make the lips bigger, but it make, certainly makes it look younger. Right. Okay. Then you decide how much you want to fill the lips. Some people can fill in a lot, some people can't. And the distinction between the two primarily is, if you look at the lips, okay, there's an area of the, of the lips which is from, you know, where the normal skin is, going back into the mouth that's supposed to be dry. You know, okay. it, it, it has it has regular epithelial layers like, like on the outside of your skin. And then you start to run into something that's a little shinier, okay, which is the mucosa of the mouth, which is supposed to be on the inside. The the, the skin on the on the outside of our face is not like the skin on the inside of our mouth. Right. Okay? It couldn't tolerate the wetness twenty four seven. Okay. So mucosa basically is always secreting some type of little you know, mucus and things along the lines. Now, you got to respect the fact that, that everybody has a difference in, the, in the, the width of that normal skin region, top and bottom. If you start to fill up it so much, and stuff, it'll roll forward that part that's supposed to be on the inside, called the mucosa. I, they will look like for the lips, it's just that you'll have your chapped lips all the time, you're licking your lips all the time, just because that skin that you roll forward is supposed to be on the inside of the right. mouth versus the outside of the mouth. You can only stretch that um, part of the lips that's supposed to be on the outside. In other words, contact with air 
just so much. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you did it time and time and time and time again, you can get that stretched out because it follows the principles of tissue expansion. But I just find people having to lick, lick their lips all the time or having put, you know, uh, some type of cream on there is, is a little bit of annoying. Right. So when we're talking about lip injectables, that's something that you come back a couple of times it, to get the to get the desired size. Actually, it just you, depends. You could you can do it, you know, at one setting. Okay. Okay. And most people do. It's just again, you don't, you know, if someone has like little speedish lips kind of situation, you can make them bigger. You you just know they don't have much skin that's mm -hmm. that's that's supposed to be on the outside. Right. Okay. And again, they'll roll forward that the inner mucosa, and I think it basically is, it, it causes more problems than, than it's worth. Right. How popular are the lip in, lip injectables? It's very popular. Is it? Yeah. I've done probably three or four just this morning and things. Oh, wow. I've done nasally befalls at least two or three, and then Botox, of course, you know, this morning. It's pretty popular, period. You know, I mean, Goodness. this time of year is, is, is a little more popular, but, you know, throughout the year, it, it's popular. Wow. What about, do you guys do the um, the lip line, lip liner? I do not. You mean no. the permanent lip liner? The permanent lip liner, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see a lot of people that do. It's mm -hmm. not harmful to to, not. to to inject with, with that in place. Uh, doing lasers over those areas is, is probably not the best thing in the world. I mean, it'll change that pigment. You know, mm -hmm. it won't change the colors. It just gets, it, it, it fades and all. But uh, in, in certain lasers, you don't, you don't want to use it all over. Right. And what about the permanent eyeliner? I've seen that that before. Yeah. I mean, it, do you, is that dangerous or is it? No, it's not dangerous. No? I mean, it's fairly safe. I mean, it doesn't feel very good. Just like, yeah. you know, doing the uh, pigments and lips. I mean, they can swell up a pretty good amount and things, and it's not the most, it's not the funniest thing in the world to do. Right. I mean, with, with the numbing medicines they put on it, it's, it's probably better, but, uh, you know, I've had people say, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't very comfortable at all. Really? Even, even with the numbing things, yeah. Oh, that just sounds like it's, it's, <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, micro, uh, we were talking about laser microdermabrasion. What about smart lipo? We see, you know, it seems like some of these, some of these women just have the perfect curves. Right. And they probably got that way. You know, Smart Lipo is very effective in, in getting the curves back and, and taking out fat that's per, fairly dense in certain areas like the flank regions or the upper abdomen region, but it's, it's fairly effective every place else. Mm -hmm. It has an added benefit of, of ha having some skin tightening, whereas most liposuctions don't. Okay. Uh, you, you can go real superficial, so basically it breaks up those portions of the, of the fat that want to s stay stiff. Right. You know, whereas with li regular liposuction stuff, you know, you have to turn the cannula off and, and break it up. Um, and again, it, it just helps with the skin tightening. Mm -hmm. How long does this type of procedure take? Mm. Uh, depending upon how many areas that you okay. do, most people are doing two, and, and we, like I said, this is something we do in the office. Uh, I always tell people to mark out you know, three hours, and not that it right. takes three hours, it's just that keeping things sterile mm -hmm. and, and, and prepping and draping and getting them all numbed up and things is, it just takes some time, so mm -hmm. I just tell people three hours. When I think smart lipo, I think, you know, the leg areas, that, mm -hmm. is that the most common? I see lateral thighs. Thighs, okay. yeah. Flanks and lower abdomen are probably the most uh, common. Even though, when I do the abdomen, I do the whole thing anyway, but their biggest concern generally is lower abdomen. And then every place else, you know, arms, necks, medial thighs, around the knees and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, or other areas that they pick on. But if, if you tell me the top three, it'd be lateral thighs, flanks especially, and, and abdomen. Do you find that more women are thinking about doing this type of these types of procedures now, um, kind of looking ahead to swimsuit season? I mean, come to think about it, it's only a couple of months away. Yeah, it's very popular now. I mean, it's, it's, it's really popular. It tends to try to trail off a little bit in August, you know, maybe September and things. But uh, all in all, it stays fairly popular until June, July. Right, Dr. Bridges, is there anything that women can do to to prevent wrinkles? I mean, you know, as far as the face mm -hmm. wash or as far as making certain um, faces, gestures with our face that, that might cause more wrinkles than? Well, I mean, the, the most effective in for, as far as wrinkle prevention yeah, is the, um, the Botox. And it's mm -hmm. primarily around this region here. And then the upper lips, I'll do the upper lips sometimes. And then if someone's got those little pitted areas in, in their chin, it works great there. Mm -hmm. It settles those out a great deal because most of those pits aren't acne. They're just basically little muscles that are pulling in the wrong directions. Right. Um, in terms of the, the lateral portion of the face, you know, and even into the neck region, you know, I tell people if they're working out and things, you know, don't keep their their neck at 90 degrees, bend it, because it's this muscle here that lies underneath the skin that pulls that jaw down. You can see it kind of yanking on the, on the, on the chin, okay. uh, I mean, on, on, the, on the jawline. 
you know, you make it stronger, its only job will be to pull down more. Really? I think everything from here all the way down is, is, is controlled by the pull on this, what's called the platysma. Right. And then you'll see the medial portion of the platysma kind of pull away from neck where you see the little line here, a little line here. The skin doesn't fall forward by itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's being pushed forward by that shortened muscle underneath. And I think the stronger you make that muscle, the, the, the more it's going to pull on the face. As far as for treating double chin, is that is that a facelift procedure or? It depends on the skin do? quality. Really? Yeah. You know, any, anytime you're working on chins or necks or any place where you're, where you're making a decision about is there too much skin or is there too much fat underneath it, you know, if there's too much fat underneath it, but the skin quality is good. In other words, like it has some elasticity to it, it's younger kind of skin things then it should snap back mm -hmm. because what you're doing with any type of liposculpting, you're just deflating a balloon. Okay? okay, if the balloon's been overblown, the likelihood of it snapping back is, is much, much less than if it was a nice little crisp balloon. Right. And so in, from one person to another person, I mean, it's just, it's always an evaluation between, you know, what, what they want and mm -hmm. basically expectations as well as what you can actually do to accomplish those. Right. They come in, they have all this skin that's hanging down, you know, but they have this big full area up here. You really wouldn't want to do liposuction because you know that skin is not going to snap back. And so I, I always tell people I don't want to create one problem, turn one problem into another problem. Yes. Okay. So they would need a, you know, a, a facelift mm -hmm. because that, that would help the neck, that helped help the gel reasons to pull all this stuff up, get these tissues back up to where they used to live. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd be much, much happier with that. Right. Uh, if someone's young, they have, you know, runs in the family, all this fullness underneath here, their skin quality looks good and things. You know, the smart lipo, you know, it's very, very effective on those. Right. And uh, you're not worried as much about skin quality as you are with someone who's older. Right. But when talking about facelifts, this is a procedure that might take a little bit of time and you would want to allow a uh, bit of recovery time as well. Right? Yeah, I think for both of them you need some recovery. Even, okay. even the smart lipo, the neck really? and things, less than that of the facelift, but you know, there's you know, there's a reasonable amount of swell in there. Uh, you're going to wear a little, little chin straps at, at night, and, or you know, if you can't during the daytime in your home, I always encourage people to wear it as much as they can. Right. Um, you know, the, the, the strap basically, or the neck, you know, kind of uh, uh, straps, you know, they're, they're doing several things. Mm -hmm. You know, in the short run, they're getting all those tissues that we beat up on, things kind of pressed into a tighter package. Okay, because, you know, with liposuction, you're just turning this area of fat into the holiest Swiss cheese you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And you want all those holes, you know, compressed down to little slits so they right. stick together and don't get a bunch of bruises and stuff underneath there. Um, second thing it does for the first couple of weeks, except, you know, it's kind of like, like an ace wrap. I mean, you can't r wrap an ace wrap around your head yeah. and things. And, and uh, But it kind of helps keep some of that swelling down to a dull roar. And then third thing, basically, I always tell, tell people the garments are there to help maintain a shape. Okay, as the tissues underneath are healing. Mm -hmm. Which you kind of wanted to kind of hold it in place so the, the I guess the face will kind of get used to yes, that shape in a way. I agree. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of the reasons. The uh, second reason is that underneath, you've taken the fat out, but there's fibrous tissue that stayed behind. Okay. And as it heals, it wants to do funny things. I mean, it wants to squinch up on itself. It wants to compress. And, and those will lead to certain shapes on the outside that, you know, could be better. Right. Okay, so the, 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 um, the garments are designed to have a certain shape to them that basically that chronic low grade pressure over time, especially if they're sleeping at night, helps keep that fibrous tissue in line the, the mm -hmm. way we want it versus where the body's going to take it. Cosmetic surgery, I must say, a great idea for your loved one. If you're still looking for a last-minute Valentine's Day gift for your significant other, Dr. Bridges, you guys have gift certificates, right? Yes, we do. So if they just want to come in and just get a gift certificate for Botox or lip injectables mm -hmm. or whatever, it's kind of, they can kind of just, um, just the ladies in. there will just fill out right. the fill out the gift certificate mm -hmm. for uh, for them. What's the number to call if they need if anybody needs to give you a yeah, call? Yeah, it's two one nine eight five five five. And you guys are located here in Shreveport, uh, just off your drive right yeah just just uh, south of uh, Baltimore Baptist Church all right you're gonna be open today until what time mm, five at least until at least five o'clock do, do you see any uh, last minute last minute uh, Valentine's Day shoppers coming in usually on, on today we've had them today yes. really yes mm-hmm
thinking they're going to be in the doghouse if they don't bring something home, right? Well, it happens that way. <laughs> exactly. It happens to <laughs> everyone. Been there, done that. <laughs> exactly. Again, give Dr. Bridges a call if you need to uh, to get one of those last-minute Valentine's Day gifts. Uh, Matthew's been talking about over the past 30 minutes or, say, uh, or so, um, Botox is really popular, um, lip injectables, um, smart lipo, um, laser microdermabrasion. They have a little bit of everything there at Bridges to Beauty right there off Uri Drive here in Treeport. So stop by, see them. And Dr. Bridges, thanks so much for calling in, uh, coming in and giving us all the secrets all to, right, Chris, to looking younger. Pleasure. Good to see you. See. That's going to do it for us for Healthline 3. Have a great day, everyone.